Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Kilopass today with Jen Tai Su, who's going to talk about problems that you start dealing with in memory, particularly one-time programmable memory, and what that's going to mean inside the, the world of the Internet of Things and Internet of Everything. Jen Tai, when engineers are developing IoT products, what, are, what kinds of problems are they running into? I think the key uh, aspect of the IoT is the power, uh, low power requirement. Uh, for the low, low power requirement, usually you either want the lower current or lower voltage uh, for, uh, for operation. So where do people normally go wrong in developing these products? Is it a choice of which IP to use, which memory to use, what throughput? Where do you see the problems? Uh, the biggest uh, choice uh, uh, problem for uh, choosing an OTP right now is uh, usually uh, anti-fuse uh, OTP cells uh, usually operate at the lead voltage uh, usually above uh, 2 volts right now. That's a uh, uh, big hindrance for the IoT application. So what are we looking at here? Uh, we are looking at the y-axis is the BIOS uh, bit cell current and uh, the x-axis is the voltage and uh, we usually for a bit cell to be programmed as one uh, to be uh, recognized by sensor we need at least about 5 microamp for the current OTP technology we have the 5, five microamp turn on voltage around at 2.2 volt that means uh, usually we need to have a lead voltage above 2.2 volt so if you're developing an IoT device or an SOC, how much of that typically is memory and how much of the power is contributed by the memory choice? Uh, currently, the, the memory cell uh, power right now, uh, OTP consumes, uh, it has uh, the power advantage. However, for the IoT uh, technology right now, obviously, uh, memory cell need to uh, do better uh, for the next generation to achieve the IoT uh, purpose. How long has the current um, technology that's been there been around? Was it before we started getting into these very, very tight power budgets, or has it been evolving with the, the technology itself? Uh, since uh, two years ago, uh, we started to, to see the IoT as a trend, and then uh, we started working on this uh, uh, spatial uh, memory cell technology, which can enable IoT technology. And so is the memory that's there now scalable enough for the IoT or is it going to run into problems? The ma majority of the uh, problem right now is in the uh, read power. So I just explained uh, usually in the older technology, in current technology we have a 5 micro amp uh, sense amp requirement which will be uh, correspond to 2.2 volt uh, operating voltage to read. So we, we have been uh, establishing a new uh, memory cell technology which can achieve the almost zero turn on voltage. So at the 5 microamp, it only corresponds to 0.75 volt. What does that do for the whole design cycle? Typically when people are working in, in very tight confined power budgets, they tend to think either average power or maximum power, but where are you coming in on this? Are you talking average? Are you talking maximum, minimum? Where where do we go here? Uh, this one we talk about is uh, is actually mostly in the dynamic uh, read power, uh, which is uh, proportional to voltage square. So if you look at the the uh, current existing uh, 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 dynamic voltage read at two point two volt, and uh, with a new memory cell technology, we can go to 0.75 volt. So it's almost uh, three times of the uh, uh, voltage scaling that will uh, equivalent to almost a 10x of the dynamic uh, read power. As you look at uh, the voltage that's necessary to keep a, the, the data in, intact in a memory, how low can that be scaled so that it still maintains that data? Is 2.2 the limit or 0.75 the limit or can it go even further? Uh, currently, for the existing cell, because of the same-same uh, limitation, to, for reliable, uh, reliably read the program uh, one cell versus zero, 
cell, we need a 5 microns. So in current technology, we pretty much are limited at this 2.2 uh, volt for, for example, uh, for 55 uh, LV process. However, for the same process, we're able to go down to 0.75 volt for this uh, new memory cell technology. Uh, this one will have the advantage of, uh, I just mentioned, the 10x improvement in terms of uh, dynamic uh, repower. And also, it, this one will serve the very good uh, foundation for just uh, use a single, uh, single power supply for the operation. Is 55 nanometers the ideal technology for this? I know that's the one that's been talked about a lot for the IoT and IOE, but is it really ideal or is it, can we go even further than that? Uh, currently for IoT, uh, uh, take us a lot of uh, foundry as an uh, uh, example. They are offering a U, ULP uh, process. Uh, th those uh, will be a good choice uh, for the, this kind of uh, memory cell application. And does the memory scale beyond that if necessary? It, if uh, it comes down to uh, like a larger uh, memory size, uh, uh, for example, in 40 nanometer, also have the ULP uh, process, or even go down to 28 nanometer, we also have uh, some of the low power application uh, uh, foundry offer those uh, processes. And one of the things that's been coming up uh, more recently, there's a couple other choices, which are FDSOI at 28 and 22, and also a 2.5D type of configuration. Do they apply as well? Is there any effect on this? Actually, we, uh, our memory cell, actually, right now, uh, the, those uh, cells already are already proven in both uh, SOI technology as well as the bulk, uh, bulk uh, processes. So it, the architecture is less important than the... Uh, um, the memory cell structure itself, the architecture. Uh, yes, we do have the flexibility to apply to either uh, SOI process or bulk processes. Uh, this uh, memory cell is uh, scalable uh, in terms of uh, technology and also is uh, kind of universal uh, for the bulk and SOI. So as you lower the voltage, does that have any impact on the access time for the memory? Uh, no, actually the access time uh, we keep the same or even better. How do you achieve that? Uh, currently we are using the, although the, the cell uh, look like a reading at a much lower voltage, however we have the patented uh, uh, access time uh, improvement uh, technology to offset this, uh, the reading at a lower voltage. So if you drop the voltage, don't you have to have some impact in terms of the efficiency of how the architecture itself works? Uh, theoretical it is. Uh, however, we have uh, patented uh, technology in terms of the sensing, sensing which can overcome this uh, voltage uh, uh, decreasing uh, in read. Uh, uh, that will enable us to achieve uh, equal or even better uh, excess time performance than our previous uh, uh, cell technologies. So as you look out at the Internet of Things over the next five years, obviously we've got some serious power constraints that people are going to have to be designing to. Um, what, you take a look at a wearable, for example, it's got to last for days, not just uh, hours. How many more um, improvements have to be done and will it take an entire ecosystem to do this? Is memory just one piece of this? Is it a clearly an important piece, but are there other pieces that will have to come as well? Yeah, uh, obviously uh, memory cell, uh, as we propose today, we're able to cut down a uh, 10x uh, in terms of uh, dynamic uh, repower. I think this uh, takes the whole community to make it work. So uh, we have done our part here and we are happy to share with uh, everyone and uh, I'm sure the uh, in the industry, so many uh, innovative uh, uh, solutions are going to enable uh, other parts uh, to be uh, uh, contribute to the overall power consumption for the IoT uh, industry. Jen Tai Su, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you very much.